for another Vesta tutorial today. So I've been talking with a lot of people who have been commenting and I have a pretty nice schedule of what we're going to be releasing. So quickly in this video, uh, it's gonna be a small extension of the last one where we made four layers of cadmium selenide. So I was talking with some people and telling them that you probably need to terminate uh, the cadmium side with hydrogen. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. There's also been some other comments talking about uh, how could you do like surface passivation? So I'll just show you an easy way to do it manually with the text editor. Uh, so I'm going to talk about surface passivation today. Then I'm going to, in the next video, I think do something with stacking faults. And in subsequent videos, I might do a more comprehensive tutorial on this cobalt phosphide system. Any case, uh, if you want me to do something special, please just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll add it to the queue of things I'm going to plan on doing. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up. So here in my PyCharm editor, I have yesterday, uh, or have from last time, the cadmium selenide four layer structure. And here what you need to do is you need to add a hydrogen molecule uh, in here to passivate the cadmium selenide. So here, just to briefly show you the structure we made last time, this actually is four layers of cadmium selenide. So this would be where my mouse is one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers. And what we need to do is add, we need to passivate this cadmium surface. Oops, excuse me. We need to passivate this cadmium surface here with hydrogen. So if I go to boundary and I were to expand this uh, surface here, you could see that I need to put a layer of hydrogen here. So how could I do that? Well. The easiest way to do that would be to keep the structure small, just have it be simply uh, just this kind of one unit cell thick in the uh, A and B dimensions, and just manually place a hydrogen roughly 1.7 angstroms above the cadmium. That turns out to be the cadmium hydrogen bond distance. So here uh, I'm looking from the base of the C, as in cat, C dimension, and you can see we have our, our, we need to find the cadmium that has the highest C uh, value in the C dimension. So let's go back to our editor. And what we see here is we have these list of Cartesian coordinates. And what this basically means is that the first four coordinates are cadmium. So it's something like cadmium, 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 right? That's what this means here. That's, so the first four are cadmium and the last four are selenium. So we find the cadmium with the highest value of C. Then we're gonna to go to the end and we're going to add it. And this will now be a hydrogen, okay? So that's how we add a hydrogen just through the text editor. And we're going to add roughly 1.7 angstroms to the bond distance. So this will be uh, become this will be one angstrom. And then if we add seven to here, this will become like this. And let's go ahead now and reopen this in Vesta. And so there you go. You now have hydrogen uh, passivating the surface. If you go and expand now, we'll do minus three to three. You can see that this is indeed passivated by hydrogen. Now, there's two things you can do here. Uh, if you wanted to expand this, so let's go ahead and actually make this a larger cell, because let's say one layer in the AB dimension is not enough. Let's go ahead and go to edit, edit data, unit cell. Let's go to transform. And we're gonna just type in three by three here in the rotation matrix, select okay. Select yes, search atoms in new unit cell and add them as new sites and select okay. Then apply. And you can see here now that we have a much more, uh, we have a larger surface. Now the question is why would you want to have this larger surface? Uh, I will answer that in a second, but let's first go ahead and go to file. Uh, actually, you know, we don't need to export this. I, I don't need to show you, but basically you'd export this and save it as a VASP file at now. I think I've showed you guys that a lot of times. Uh, you can certainly watch the last video and see how I do it. So, but anyways, the reason why you want to 
have a larger surface like this is because when you passivate a surface with hydrogen, it's often the case that actually not all of these surface sites are passivated. So if you wanted to, there's a certain passivation density. So if only 50% of the surface was passivated, uh, what you would do is you would basically delete half of these atoms. Okay, so you could manually come in now and delete half of these atoms. You know, the actual atoms you're going to delete, that's up to you, but you could model certain passivation densities in this way. And the reason why you might want to do this is because certain, uh, as you passivate the structure, you're going to uh, heal those sort of dangling bonds that are at the surface of the cadmium. And what happens is that when you passivate all, you can control how metallic the system is through the passivation. Okay, so I think this was a good enough video for today. It's just very simple how you could change the passivation. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and just show you simply how to change to a different type of passivation. So what if you wanted to passivate with selenium? Uh, what you could do then is you could actually keep this to be selenium. Oops. And leave it like this. Uh, the selenium uh, cadmium bond distance probably is going to be larger or than it is for selenium and hydrogen. Also, selenium might form a different bond angle. So you see there's different angles for selenium. So this isn't probably the way you want to do selenium. But what you could do if you wanted to study some like isotope effects or, or, or maybe something of like a larger atom, you could change it to something like a carbon. So how would we, how would we passivate with uh, carbon? Uh, you would just add the C here like this. And then if we reopen it, you can see now there's a carbon atom at the top. If you want to draw the bond between uh, cadmium and carbon, you have to first understand how far away the carbon is. So we can go to this bond distance tool, select both atoms. It tells you they're 1.7 angstroms apart as we did on purpose. But now you have to have Vesta somehow perceive this bond so you can go to edit bonds, make a new bond. And here we're gonna search for a bond between cadmium and carbon. And we want the max length to be 1.7 angstroms. And we select apply and now it's able to perceive the bond. Before it was 1.6 angstroms and it's not able to perceive a bond between cadmium and carbon, that's 1.6 angstroms. It needs to be to 1.7. You can now press OK. You can see in the space filling now. So when the space fillings are overlapping like this, it, it typically means to me that you're going to have to increase the bond distance. Anyways, let's go ahead and expand this to uh, minus 3, 3, minus 3, 3. Select apply. And you can see now that you have successfully uh, terminated this cadmium. Now, cadmium and carbon is, is a little awkward. I don't think that uh, they are something that you're going to necessarily be able to get away with, but it is you know good enough for this purposes, for just for the demonstration purposes. Okay, that's it. Take care, everyone.